it's milking time in the evening, and I am milking Cory. This is a really sweet goat. This is her first freshening. So she actually does not milk as much milk um, as a second or third freshener would. But her milk is really delicious, and she's really well behaved. You can hear the babies screaming in the background. Um, <laughs> I dropped their feed down, their grain down just a little bit because we've got rain coming in and I don't want them to have stomach issues. So um, the more grain they eat, the more susceptible they are to stomach issues. So I cut them back a little bit. They're not happy with it. But um, so right now I'm milking three goats, uh, all Nigerian dwarfs. I've already milked the first one in the order. Her name is Roselle. And um, second one in the order is Cory, and then Trix is going to be the third. Always milk your goats in the same order unless you want complete and total mayhem at milking time. Um, it takes them, they're really quick learners, it takes them a few days, but um, after a few days they get the hang of it and they don't all try to run you over when you open the gate for milking. The first one knows she's the first one. And you can actually use this to manipulate their behavior a little bit. So, I've had tricks for a couple years now, maybe three actually, three years almost. And since she was my first goat, she's my herd matriarch. And so she would be very sassy and very poorly behaved on the milk stand. Um, and it was just a nightmare to get her milked. And I had read something actually about cows, that if you have a cow, I'm dipping her teats right now, this is just half and half water and vinegar, it's an excellent tea dip. Um, when you use this, it, on, it not only works as a mild disinfectant, it also, that vinegar curdles whatever milk is left at the, t the end of the teat, and it kind of makes a plug to prevent any bacteria from going in. So this is excellent, low cost, widely available teat dip, and it's just um, one part of vinegar to one part of water. So going back to what I was saying about behavior, um, Corey likes to eat a little bit extra and I let her. Um, for, for cows, I had read if you have a cow that does not want to go um, into the milking stanchion, you let all the other cows have free reign of the milking stanchion, feed them treats there, you don't let the cow you want to milk into the stanchion. Well, she gets irritated because that's her right. Um, usually the sassier ones are at the top of the pecking order. Um, and since she is jealous, which is so silly to think that animals get jealous, but they really do, um, the next time she will, she, after a couple times that, she will rush right into the milking stanchion and want to be first. And so, and will be well behaved just for the opportunity to be there to get her treat. Um, so, I sort of used this and blended it with uh, the goat psychology, self-taught goat psychology um, wisdom that I've gained over several years. And um, previously, I had been milking tricks first in the order because she's the goat that I had first. She was the first I ever had milk. She was a herd matriarch, so I milked her first. I bumped her all the way back. She's all the way at the end. I milk her at the end. And it was really interesting because you could see instantly it created infighting, harmless infighting. You know, they goats like to jostle uh, for pecking order like chickens do. But um, there, there was a lot of infighting for the first few days, and they sort of resorted themselves. And after that, within a couple of days, she just, she just stands and lets me milk her. It's absolutely amazing. Um, so if you've got a problem goat and they're at the top of the order and you're milking them first, you may want to try bumping them back. Lots of flies at summertime. You may want to try bumping them back in the order, um, even all the way down to last and see if that works. It is amazing for me. Um, I don't have to tie her uh, feet down anymore. Now this is a different goat. She really never needed her feet tied down. She's such a good girl. Um, but yeah, just made a huge difference in uh, how easy it was to milk that goat. And now it's actually enjoyable 
she doesn't mind it actually I think she likes her time on the milk stand where she gets a treat um, and we don't have all that drama with her kicking me um, in my chest plate and um, just totally freaking out now milking tricks and you'll notice that I'm in a completely different position this is my previous problem milker just cut sorry I got some milk on the lens so one of the things I noticed too about her um, is that for some reason her udder, I mean it looks, there's nothing wrong with it, but her letdown reflex is a little tougher, it requires more bumping, and I just found I could do that easier from this back position. So this is how I milk her. So that's another tip, if you've got a goat and you're having a hard time milking her and you're doing it from the side or maybe you're doing it from the back, try switching it up. Um, goats are Goat boobies are like people boobies. They're all different. So her lactation is not going to be the same as another goat's lactation. And um, I also noticed with her, and you'll notice how I'm milking her, I'm bumping almost in between every um, squirt. And instead of doing the alternate like I like to do from the side like that, it's easier for me to do a bump and then use both hands. And I've just found that this gets her milked out a lot quicker for the type of um, letdown reflex that she has. She requires more stimulation. And if you think about a goat kid, you know, they're not gently taking little sips here and there. They're really bumping that butter. Um, and that's really what Trix requires in order for her to let down. And that way I can get done quickly before she loses patience with me um, and just being in the back it helps with my this part of my hand is pressed really firmly against her udder um, the rear udder above her teeth and that seems to be where she tries to hold on to a lot of her milk so see just in that time and the only part I can't remember if I filmed or not the only part I didn't maybe film with it. No, I filmed the first squirt because I got it on the camera. So, um, I'm already done milking her. And she kitted in first week of March and we're in July. She's done eating already so I'm glad I'm done milking. And, um, she's probably given a little bit more than a pint still, which is great for a Nigerian. She's not going to win any, um, star milker awards but that's okay so when you read sorry I'm done milking some of these just to wipe my foot it's so hot out here um, when you read online that a Nigerian dwarf can make half a gallon of milk a day can that doesn't mean the average Nigerian dwarf that you're gonna get a reasonable price is gonna make half a gallon of milk that half a gallon of milk a day that's gonna be a star milker Right now I'm just pouring her milk into there. This keeps the flies out and it also, um, if I do have a goat that a fly bites her leg or something uh, and she kicks, she's not stepping in a whole, all the milk for the day. Um, so this will be less than half a gallon. And so I get a little bit less than half a gallon at every milking. Here's Trix. <laughs> Goats are so funny, don't you think? They're so cute. Um, I get a little less than half a gallon at every milking, and that's fine for my family. Uh, we use that for our coffee, we use it for our drinking milk, and then I'll occasionally I'll make some goat cheese or some mozzarella. Um, now I'm doing something a little bit different with Trix. This is because she has a yearling. Um, I say yearling, I think she's two now. Um, she has a baby that she had a uh, year before last two kittings ago that still tries to drink her milk and Trix lets her um, and so in order to keep them together and they do eat better when they're kept together um, I have to milk her teats now this doe ling or yearling or whatever you want to call her um, Rosie and she's actually rubbing against the fence uh, you can't really see her. She's too far back. Anyhow, she's rubbing against the fence back there, but she drinks her own milk too, um, which is a terrible, terrible trait. 
and uh, so I have to tape her teats too, which is a pain. But for this, I just if you ever have to use teat tape, the best kind, um, this is the 3M Durapur tape, and it's fabric. Don't use the paper. If you use the paper, it like melds in with their skin. And so what I do is I do two strips of tape for each teat. I do one like this, um, up and down, and then I do one going around. So I'm going to do the one that goes around right there. And that holds up really well, and it also, I'm able to get it off pretty easily. And I always put the seam of that round and round when facing whatever side I milk so I can easily pull it off. There you have it. Now I'm going to go inside. Tom's in the background. He loves, he's a ham. He loves the ladies. Um, I'm going to go inside and shower. <laughs> and I've got my, I actually have what I wore to work underneath my overalls, so... Um, if the sun was out, if we didn't have a storm in the Gulf, I would definitely have changed into a tank and athletic wear because, dang, it is hot down here on the Gulf Coast. Um, but I'm going to get a shower, and I'm going to make a steak dinner, and it's going to be so good. I'm gonna have I know, but, you know, I work hard. I deserve it sometimes. So, I'll see you next time, and thanks for watching.